Hello there, and welcome to our look ahead to what the papers will be bringing us tomorrow. With me are the former Labour advisor and comedian Aisha Hazarika and Neil Midgley, media commentator at The Telegraph. Let's have a look at some of the front pages. Uh, we're going to start with the Metro, and it leads with a reaction from European leaders to Boris Johnson's comments that France's president was behaving like a World War II prison camp guard over Brexit. The Express quotes the Brexit secretary, David Davis, saying he would stand up to the EU if it threatened Britain with retaliation over leaving. The Telegraph says UK ministers and officials are already conducting informal trade talks with 12 countries, including China, India, Australia and South Korea. According to The Times, sufferers of cancer, diabetes and asthma could have to wait for treatment as health chiefs consider cost-cutting plans to restrict access to medicines. And The Guardian leads on President Obama's final news conference and his explanation of why he commuted the prison sentence of the former US soldier Chelsea Manning. We're going to get into President Obama's last news conference in a moment. But first, we're going to start with the Metro, uh, Aisha. Um, EU fury at Boris, Nazi dig. Now, what on earth is this about? Well, you know how yesterday we were having Theresa May saying that we were going to um, take a very constructive approach with our Brexit negotiations. Right. That seems to have um, sort of come to a bit of an abrupt halt today <laughs> because Boris Johnson um, said, likened Hollande, uh, President Hollande of France, to um, being like a, a World War II um, guard administering punishment beatings to anyone yes. that chooses to escape. Now, this has not gone down massive surprise particularly <laughs> well with our friends in Europe. The European yeah. lead negotiator has called his comments abhorrent, but Theresa May's people are very much standing <laughs> by Boris and, and, and kind of say, and say, look, it's all fine. Look, at the end of the day... But we, we know all... they don't think it's all fine. Well, I think they'll. Be I think they probably do. I think, think they probably. Fine. I think they'll right. be taking a calculation that this kind of language will probably work for the people they need it to work yeah. for. Right. The people who they needed the speech to talk to yesterday. I mean, right. it's it, only at the weekend we were still calling our esteemed prime minister Theresa Maybe. Mm. Well, not anymore. Mm. I mean, th this this week sh she's shown in her speech that there is a sort of Churchillian Thatcherite. Mm -hmm. um, backbone that we never knew. As she tosses was there. out the single market, which as she tosses course, out the single Thatcher market, helps bring in. But anyway, and then and then Boris goes off and you know sort of reinvokes World War II. <laughs> it's a bit like <laughs> Dad's Army, you know those Union Jack arrows extending over the continent. Oh, okay, so uh, 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 Theresa May has managed to get the 52 percent on board. That's basically what yesterday's speech did, and that's what all these headlines seem to suggest. And she's certainly done well as far as the majority of the right-leaning press, yeah. press, it has to be said. But what about the 48%? I think she is making a very strong political calculation. Mm -hmm. I think she's, she's not really that bothered about the 48%. Right. She is very much yeah. sending a kind of patriotic, nostalgic... British message mm. to those 52 people and she's also sending a message to she's trying to get attra attract voters in different parties she's sending a message to people in Labour heartlands that voted leave yeah. that they can stick with her because she will deliver on immigration above ev ever of anything else and she's trying to send a message to UKIP supporters as well saying don't go to UKIP stick with the Conservatives because we will deliver on immigration the only thing she cares about right now is immigration. She's making a political right. calculation. Okay, over the, the Daily Express. I mean, just, just, just make, yeah. Neil, we, we won't be bullied by EU. Brexit, exactly. the Brexit team warns Brussels. I mean, is is what Asia is saying fair about the 48? No, I, I, I disagree about the 48. I yeah. think. I mean, there were certainly some vox pops on the news last night from people in the 48 saying, yeah. actually, I was quite encouraged by this. Right. And I think people because there's might, someone out there fighting for. Yes. Because it's, it's 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 strong and it's patriotic. Yeah. And I think people can now see. Uh, that there is an end game here, that there is a worst case scenario, which is that we just walk away, that we leave the single market, we leave the EU, there is no deal. Mm. You know, we go back to World Trade Organization rules like the US and everybody Shop else. Good. They're not good. They're not brilliant. Massive tariffs. But, you know, the tariffs, as you know, the, as the leavers keep telling us, the tariffs at the moment will be cancelled out by the fall in the value of sterling anyway for mm. our exporters. I mean, there are all sorts of horrible things like... Mm financial passporting in the City of London yeah. and all of that. Yeah. But people are now seeing that, that, that Theresa May has now raised that. This is the prospect that we may just have to walk away if our European partners won't do a deal. And the markets haven't fallen, the pound hasn't fallen a great deal, 
employment is high, inflation's okay, economic growth re actually went up in the second half of last year. I mean, people just are not feeling this Brexit disaster. I, 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 so you want to respond to that? I am absolutely are, are no, desperate no, to happen. Listen, easy, easy time. So listen, my, my theory in this is we've all got to calm down the rhetoric. The Remainers shouldn't catastrophize everything, but the Brexiteers shouldn't glorify yeah. everything. There's got to be a middle way. There's got to be a middle way. And also, <laughs> and also, also well, I'm not a Ramona, so we're quick. <laughs> okay. so, and uh, I'm nothing. Uh, you're not, but the, remember, <laughs> this threat, by the way, of walking away is a thing that a lot of the 48% are worried about because Theresa May, at the beginning of her speech, said, Don't worry, I'm going to protect workers' rights. But then at the end, said, Look, if we don't get a deal, we will walk away. Mm. So you could be talking about a Britain that you know has very different you know tax stuff becomes mm. a bit of a tax haven and cuts a lot of business regulation, red tape, employment rights. A lot of trade unions are worried about that. So I think that's why. But the she's just said she'll protect them. You're no, calling you, her a liar already. No, but I think she's facing in two different directions. I think I think the 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 the, the thing for the 48 is that they were told before the vote that it was all going to come crashing down immediately after June yeah. 23rd. Yeah. That, that, you know, George Osborne <laughs> said... Oh, I'm right, gonna, right. No, I George yeah, yeah, Osborne... The Leave people let, let, said okay. we were going to get loads let's of money not, for the NHS... Let's not find that battle again. Listen, I but, got but, enough but, of a headache during the <laughs> referendum campaign. I really don't want it again tonight. Please. So let's go to the Telegraph. Uh, Aisha, Britain embarks on trade crusade. So, um, uh, the International Trade Secretary... Uh, Liam Fox, he is already scoping out the lie of the land. Yes. And you'd expect that, wouldn't you? He is. So um, he's doing what's called trade audit. So he's starting to um, prepare the ground for, for doing... Um, he's apparently in talks with about mm. 12 countries. And EU leaders have, have tried to say to, to Britain that you can't start doing any trade deals up until now. Yeah. But they're saying, look, no, we're going to... It's a bit of a grey to... area, this, isn't it? I mean, you know, surely we can be talking to anyone we like. To me, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I don't think that's unusual. And mm. I know lots of sectors are, are doing trade missions all the time to yeah. different countries outside the EU. So I don't think there's anything that surprising. The thing that's interesting later on in this article, though, is David Davis, the Brexit secretary, says that the government, and it goes back to one of my earlier points, is really keen to bring back that target of net migration to below 100,000. Now, right. this has qu it's, it's quite a tortured history, these mm. migration targets. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something that is sort of kind of colour Theresa May's view on it, particularly having been the Home Secretary, where yeah. one of the things is cited is she didn't hit those um, migration, those reduction targets. Mm -hmm. So make no mistake, immigration is absolutely central to this. They are making a calculation which says this is an argument which is about the politics of immigration, rightly or wrongly, rather than the economics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that there was, a again, a, a a view put about by the Remain campaign. And I'm a Remain, by the way. I don't want Brexit, but it's going to happen now. Mm -hmm. um, so he's uh, one of the 48 percent, and he's yeah. happy. Well, I'm, I'm happier. So he's happy. I'm, I'm happier because the wheels haven't. I'm haven't, Scottish. I'm um, never happy. <laughs> You're going to be a fighter well, anytime anyway, soon. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was this the, the, a view that uh, there would be this price that we would have to pay for entry for access to the single market once once we leave you know mm -hmm. the europeans would exact a price mm -hmm. and there's never there, there was never any thought that there might be a price the other way around right uh, and now we're you know for access to our market the fifth largest economy in the world and now the government is getting after months of kind of paralyzed indecision is showing a bit of spirit uh, and a bit of humor i think you know with boris's comments and with liam fox you know, he's not really supposed to go around trying to do trade deals while we're still in the customs union. But what are they going to do? Gonna say, yeah. I was going to say, what are they going to do? Exactly. And, <laughs> and so people, I think, now are seeing that there could be life. I mean, two of these 12 yeah. countries, by yeah. the way, that he's doing these mm -hmm. uh, early talks with are China and India. Yeah. Well, if you yeah. got them, you're doing all right. Well, which is why Boris is there now making uh, comments about the Nazis. <laughs> As you do. He didn't. Yes, yeah, he did. All right. He talks about World War II movies, actually. It's all World War II movies. OK, um, The Guardian. Um, uh, Neil, justice has been served. Obama defends Manning leniency in... Leniency, rather. Yes. In last press conference. Yeah, Chelsea Manning is the former soldier who leaked all those uh, classified documents to WikiLeaks and rather mm. made Julian Assange's name at mm. the time and was sentenced to 35 years in prison and... 
I mean, this is a this is a thing that American presidents do as they leave office is yep. that they they grant leniency to. Mm. I mean, I think it's two hundred and nine people uh, that, yeah. that Obama has granted leniency mm. to. Mm. So Chelsea Manning's sentence will now end; she'll be freed, and people are up in arms saying, "Look, she got a thirty-five year sentence because she did the biggest." Uh, breach of data of data confidentiality, yeah. cl classified data confidentiality mm. in U.S. history, and there's a really interesting article actually in the New Yorker saying, well, when you look at it a bit more carefully, she's already served, served uh, almost a, seven years, a, a lot longer than anybody than else leakers. Um, yeah. has served previously. Yeah, that we might need leakers in the Trump administration, yeah. <laughs> and it might be a good idea to encourage them. But in, in, indeed, that's a very good point, actually. But Aisha, um, the flip side of this is that apparently Julian Assange has tweeted or said, made it clear, that he'd be willing to go to the United States, give himself up if Chelsea Manning was released. Well, let's see if he honours his, his word. I mean, she has been released early, yeah. and let's see if he, he does that. I did see somebody outside um, the embassy, and there was no sign of, of life. Yeah. Um, in terms of him. But the, but the other thing which is interesting, I think, about this last final press conference is, look, we're already kind of mourning um, Obama not being there. <laughs> and, and, you know, he's, his, his exit approval ratings are very, very plus high, percent, yeah. very high. And, yeah. you know, we've all got accustomed to his kind of grace, his humour. But he mm. says this very interesting thing um, that his daughters are not planning. They're very disappointed about the result, yeah. but they're not planning to follow him into politics. But he doesn't say anything about his wife. His wife, yeah. Michelle for president. Yeah. yeah. I still wonder why you'd want to do that job, given what you've seen your husband. What, be the most through. powerful person in the world? <laughs> 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 exactly, yeah. Bit of a downside yeah. to that as well. Bit of a downside to that as well. Uh, I think, because we're running out of time, finally, the Times, British bubbly. Um, we finally got a name. We can't call it champagne. We can't call it Prosecco because we know that those names are already <laughs> taken by other countries. Carver, whatever. Aisha, we've got a name. It looks like. We have. It's called, yeah. it's called British Fizz. British Fizz. It, this is post-Brexit Britain. It's, we've, got to, yeah. we've got to have our names yes. on everything. I thought they could have gotten a combination of like um, British and, you know, Bolly, Brolly. We could have Broly. had something like that, <laughs> well, basically. This is a bit of a... This is a bit yeah. of a Boaty McBoatface yeah. story, isn't I'm not, it? I'm In the not sense sure that about British Fizz. I know, they've tried to come up with, but they've tried to come up with all kinds of names. Yeah. Merit was one, yeah. named after a scientist in the 17th century, mm. who, who perfected the fer fermentation technique. I mean, British Fizz does what it says on the tin or bottle, doesn't it? A bit like Boaty McBoatface, though, does it? Doesn't sound like well, apparently it does to this New York <laughs> wine merchant who came up with it and is well, selling it's bound it by to the... sound good to Americans. It's the same kind of, it sounds like the kind of thing you get in a tin or a can, basically. <laughs> a can of like British fizz. Then that'd be diet there British you fizz. Go. Oh dear. All right. Okay. We're going to leave it there. Neil, Aisha, thanks very much Thank indeed you. for looking at some of the stories behind the uh, headlines and uh, enjoy some British fizz. When you get home tonight, send you back to bed. Uh, that's the papers for tonight. Don't forget, you can see the front pages of all of them online on the BBC News website. It's there for you seven days a week at bbc.co.uk forward slash papers. And if you miss the programme any evening, you can watch it later on iPlayer. So thanks again to Neil and Aisha and to you for watching.